uh, let's go ahead and jump into the show. The number is 252-228-5098. That's 252-228-5098. We'd love for you to be a part of the broadcast. Check us out on YouTube. Smash the thumbs up button. Get in the comments. There's a lot of people in the chat already. And uh, just engage with the show. That's what we're looking for. And boy, I, I got to say this, Cody, you, you mentioned it, is that each and every week there's a lot of talk to talk about. There's a lot to talk about and it feels like, um, and we've made, we've had a running joke so long in the background is every time I'm like, I think tonight's going to be a short show. It turns into a four hour argument about something or discussion. Right. And there's been actually more to it than we first thought. Sounds like the C3 podcast. Yeah. The, the NFL has been so, is so good at just owning and occupying the headlines all year round. I mean, you got the ACC tournament right now starting and nobody, you know, it's like still just NFL everywhere. Um, I don't know if though this year with this news, I feel more anxiety this year than I ever, I find all of this immensely stressful at this moment. You should. The Panthers <laughs> could literally do one of five different things from now until the start of next season at the quarterback position. And um, all of they, them could be awesome or all of them could like, right. ends, it's they, like they, uh, they, custard's they have, last stand. <laughs> they all have their pluses and minuses. They all have their upsides and downsides, however you want to say it. Um, that's why the, uh, Scott Fitterer, this is going to be a make it or break it year for Scott. Like we're really going to see what kind of front office we have based on what the Carolina Panthers do in the next couple months. But, boys, let's just jump into it real quick. Let's react to the news that Derek Carr is now going to be playing us twice a year with the New Orleans Saints. Derek Carr agreed to a four-year deal for $150 million with $100 million in total guarantees per Mike Garofolo. He gets $70 million effectively fully guaranteed, $60 million at signing, another $10 million in year three. Uh, vesting after year one, Carr structures his deal to accommodate Saints cap issues. So more voodoo by the Saints front office. They always seem to make things work. But um, I mean, let me ask you all this. Did the Saints overpay for Derek Carr? Or are they now the de facto front runner to win the NFC South? When it comes to this, I first have a question about the contract. Uh, the, the 70 million, right? So he gets the 60 and then he still, I mean, they're paying him $35 million for two years, right? And then in year three, right, they probably still owe him even more money, right? So, I mean, this guy is, it, he didn't come cheap. And to answer your question, I would say, that yeah, it's like first they are better now with Derek Carr than they were without him. Um, the other thing is this is starting money quarterback now, thirty five million a year. Right. That's they're committing to him being the starter, and this is not an overpay if he's if they build around him and they are successful. It's an overpay if they regret this in a year. This is very kind of eerily similar to the Teddy Bridgewater court. Uh, contract in some ways is that it's a little more commitment than we wanted and I think that's why the Panthers weren't really uh, a front runner in this discussion I, I don't think that that's anything wrong with that I mean I, I think that here's the thing I do believe that this makes them the front runner in the NFC South right now okay um, now if any of these teams figure out their quarterback situation in the same office in this same off season, be it the draft or if the Panthers happen to go get good old Lamar Jackson, or if the, the Falcons go and get him or somebody else uh, makes another splash move that would then change my mind on who's the de facto leader. But as of right now, yes, this makes the saints the front runner because they have a quarterback that is, middle of the pack i don't think anybody has the quarterback that has proven to be middle of the pack yet so that'd be my only reason and my only caveat there is i think this could rapidly change um and i also think that uh uh the there's the fact that the saints are able to do what they do with the cap is just 
Honestly, they should make it illegal. I don't know how the hell they do They're it. They're the Federal Reserve, uh, I CK. I don't understand. They just print money on there. Well, I don't understand how they can do it, but no other teams can. You understand what, what I mean? Like, I just it doesn't make any sense. There's no logic to that. Um, and and I'm sure that there's some something coming down the line that's going to make this hurt. Like it, it, at some point, this is going to be something they're going to have to pay the piper. It hasn't happened yet in the past five years when they've been in Capel every single year, but it is something it's that voodoo, I think, man. Yeah, I think that it. You, I would like to think that it's if 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 it's possible to do what they're doing and not have it be a major impact in some way, shape, or form now or in the future. Um, then and the fact that other teams aren't doing it is just dumb. It doesn't make any sense to me. Everybody has to know about what they're doing, and I just the fact that nobody is is just mind boggling to me. I wonder what this means for Alvin Kamara, right? We've heard the news that Derrick Henry is on the trading block. Christian McCaffrey was moved last year, and Alvin Kamara was um, a contract very and very similar. I think it was the same year of McCaffrey's, unless it was the year after. I think it was the same year. So they were like really in the kind of the same place with uh, a running back who was really, really good, but also expensive. Right. Um, they're to trade them just like the. McCaffrey trade will leave them with some dead money. I think they just have said we'll we'll keep dead money around. Like it's always going to be a part of our organization. Yeah. We're just going to keep adding people. I wonder if Kamar's traded. I know that he's got some pending off field stuff where he broke that guy's jar or whatever in Las Vegas, and I, he still hasn't been suspended for those things. So, well, he hasn't <laughs> been uh, found guilty of anything yet. So, yeah, they're waiting. It's, but at some point, that is also going to catch up with it. So, I wonder what it means for Alvin Kamara. Uh, but, you know, it's like, hey, they're not hesitant to bring in what they think is the next real right. improving free agent piece well, to their team. And should they be wrong for feeling that way? I mean, the last time they had a quarterback, you know, just a pure pocket passing quarterback, it was Drew Brees, you know. And even though Derek Carr is certainly not Drew Brees, he at, le at least fits that same kind of mold. He can right. push the ball down the field. He still has a live arm. You know, they're going to like the idea of him throwing to Chris Olave, you know, handing the ball off. I think that's what the Saints still want to do. I think they would love to still have, have Alvin Kamara. I don't know if they actually will or not. But, I mean, if you're the Saints, yeah, I, I understand why you would make this deal. Apparently, sure. he favored New Orleans because they were the only ones willing to trade draft capital for him even before the Raiders were going to cut him. So, you know, it's kind of like, hey, man, they were showing me that they love me. So, yeah, I'm, I'm going to go there. Um, uh, the contract is obviously massive. Um, but but do, do you think now, I mean, obviously we're Panther fans. We all think the Panthers are going to win. But, you know, now that they do have Derek Carr, pretty much everyone and their mama is saying that the New Orleans Saints are the odds on favorites in the NFC South now. Uh, is that too much too fast or what do we think about that? Cause like to me, you could do worse than Derek Carr, but I also think there are ways that, especially if Carolina drafts a quarterback that potentially we could have a better chance than the new Orleans Saints this year. Yeah. I don't think it makes them the de facto leader. What I think, I think I agree with CK on this is that as of now, they are a better team. They have improved from where they were last year. You would think this move is a positive addition, whether how much you want to argue it is, whether it's one step right. or 10 steps forward. It's They've gotten better, and no one else has yet because the draft hasn't happened. There's, you know I mean? So in that light, yeah. But I think the, the very similar case is probably just comparable to what it would have done for Carolina. Is like we would say if we had Derek Carr, we would say we are the lead in this division because we got Easily, the best yeah. quarterback. We would go back to this crazy right. coaching staff and say, oh, He's the it's most proven, the most yeah, proven out of every known commodity, right? Is like, um, but uh, this also tells you too is they knew that they weren't getting a quarterback in this draft. They were picking at 10 right behind us. And uh, they don't have a pick now. They got it in a San Francisco deal till the 30th pick. I don't know where I they are. They were, I thought they were 28th. 
because of remember the 30th they, uh, on draft it says 28 is buffalo man unless this is yeah 2023 draft order right yeah uh it goes dallas 27 buffalo 28 cincy 29 and new orleans gets the first round san francisco's first round pick at 30. uh who that dude says they have 29. yeah i think that's what tankathon said too yeah i'm looking at it right now you're on tankathon yes i mean like am i reading it wrong this is it says oh no let me change this is the draft right yeah scroll down and it says right there 30. oh who that dude you're wrong bro (laughs) <laughs> i don't know i mean unless this site's wrong i mean it might be no i don't I mean, really care but right. it's like here it's 29 or 30 it doesn't matter I, mean, I remember you know, thinking that it was also in the 20s also but hey whatever you know um hey uh real quick i mean it's kind of unrelated but i think it's also you know it's worth mentioning in the same breath i saved it for later but um the seahawks breaking off geno smith to a three-year deal a 105 million dollar contract Including 52 million in the first year, um, and you know, do you, who do you think got a better deal, New Orleans or Seattle? And Seattle's picking number five right now. Do you think that this takes them out of the quarterback hunt in the first round? They're picking number five. I say no, because even though it's a three-year deal, it's only really two of them that are like for sure guaranteed. So. You know, if they drafted, for example, Anthony Richardson, he might be able to sit behind him for two years. Like, to me, they could still take a quarterback. That doesn't eliminate them from taking a quarterback early, in my own opinion. Oh, we saw, I solved it. This is why it's, he's right, is 29. It technically is 29 because Miami is picking 21, but they had to forfeit their pick. Mm. And Tankathon doesn't move it. What so did they is, have to forfeit their pick for? For the, uh, collu- for that, the, yeah, the uh, talking with Tom Brady. And Tom, yeah, yeah. Oh, thing. wow. I didn't even know that they lost the first round. Yeah, yeah. they lost that whole what thing. Yep. Yeah, what do y'all make about Gino? Um, I mean, it honestly, sounds like a two year deal. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it pretty much is. It's a basic deal. It's nothing that I think is um, worth writing home about personally. Um, it's uh, it's it, it. I agree with you, Cody. I think that this it, it all this is is just um, them doing. I think Geno Smith. I was thinking about this when they re- reported this. I'm like, can you imagine what it must be like to be Geno Smith right now, having gone through what he went through to get to where he is, and actually make it, getting a contract like that? It's just got to be mind boggling to have that type of uh, just that roller coaster of emotions going on right there. So that's. I'm happy for the guy. I think that it's, I personally believe it's overpaid after one. And it's honestly a decent year. I wouldn't even say it was like a great year. Like it was early on, but it was a decent year. Um, And he just got broken off. And I think it's great for him, but um, I don't think it removes them from the contention for one of those top quarterbacks personally. My two cents on the Geno stuff is uh, like, if I was a Seahawks fan, I'd be happy about where we sat right now. Um, like you said, there is a cool aspect to this story, CK, is that it's like counter to the the mm-hmm. type of stories we are accustomed to hearing, right? It's like when somebody said, oh, something happened to me this past weekend, you assume like they life-changing. If they say, hey, I had a life-changing event that just happened, we generally think nine times out of ten the damn news is going to be bad. Right. Um, this girl that works with me, her daughter won a four million dollars in a scratch off ticket in Greenville one time, like five years ago. I mean, she works on the same floor as me, like in the same suite. And I could not stop thinking about this. And it was, and I was telling people about it, I was just talking with a lot of people about it. And somebody said to me, Man, you sound jealous. I said, No, it's not the money. Like, of course, I would want the money. But, like, it's so awesome to hear somebody's life improve positively so much (laughs) in such a short span. So that Geno part is awesome. But I think this is great for Seattle. What I would do is this, is I'd still take a quarterback right here. Right. Yeah. And by the way, the, the, the reports were is that Anthony Richardson had a fantastic uh, meeting with the Seattle Seahawks. 
I mean, he was ranting and raving about it, saying that it felt natural. He he really likes Seattle. So, yeah, maybe that is what they do, man. I don't um, think this takes him out of the quarterback discussion nope. at all. I would no, be I disappointed so if they didn't take a quarterback. Honestly, I think a lot if of I was a fan. fan would be as well. I mean, it's perfect. This is how you want to do it. You want to, yeah. in a draft where you want to maybe reach on upside, but you don't want to rush it. You don't want to put unnecessary burden on a what Levis or whatever, whoever, pick whoever your upside guy is. You don't fall off a cliff. You get a guy who's been in the league for over a decade who was, knows that this is, and you pay him too. Like everybody wins here. Everybody wins here, in my opinion, for the Seahawks. Yeah. What does that do? Oh, I guess speaking of these guys at the combine. Yes, sir. Uh, so listen, Anthony Richardson really was the talk of the of the scouting combine and uh, his measurables. I mean, let, let's be real. They're the best that we've ever seen from a quarterback at that position. Um, we were able to kind of show, you know, we did a live stream. Thank you to everybody that tuned in um, to that live stream. We were able to watch um, some of the combine. And Anthony Richardson has really started to impress. Um, what What did you guys think? And I'll kind of play some clips while we're talking about it here. But who was the most impressive quarterback this year at the Combine and why? Even though everyone's talking about Anthony Richardson, maybe you think it was C.J. Stroud. C.J. Stroud had a fantastic day throwing the football. The ball popped out of his hand really smooth. Um, a lot to consider for Carolina. What say you boys? Um, Go ahead, Tony. You know, as this is a, and uh, you know, the combine it, it it caters to people like Anthony Richardson, and what I mean by that, who are physically gifted. You know, it is a physical giftness skills sh uh, show. So I expected Anthony Richardson to be the most impressive as long as he looked good throwing. You know, you knew this is where he was going to shine the most. I didn't see, I think I would say that Stroud and Young both acquitted themselves very well. Like they, um, there, look, as we, I thought this would be a place where Richardson stock, like his star, would so overshine Bryce Young who wasn't even throwing. You were worried about how much he came in at, and he really belied some of, you know, put some of the size fears. I think they, he dampened them, dampened them. So I think right. people feel less worried about his size as a thing. Um, and they're confident in the tape and they'll go to his pro day and he'll be, uh, he'll be back to number one. Um, and I think CJ Stroud held on, like, I mean, he held on to his stock very well. Because he couldn't, he's not gonna be able to beat Richardson in this type of day. You know, it's like, yeah. and so I think everybody won here. And I would say maybe Levis comes out being the boringest one out of all of them. I don't even know that he his was. It wasn't like, bad. It wasn't bad. Like it's just in comparison. I think it was just it wasn't as as good. And I think it's uh, the company that he was surrounded by made it easy for him to look like the ugly. Uh, ugliest girl in the group, right? Um, as we've talked about multiple times. Probably, At least uh, he didn't screw up, CK. That's actually what he needed to do. Is right. his, is like because his his performance was not memorable, but that's better than it being uh, memorable for bad reasons, right? I no, I agree with that. I think uh, um, you know, it, I went back and I watched all of these guys because I was not there present with you guys as much as I wanted to be. Um, I was uh, watching a. A, a play uh, for it was Peter Pan um, for a middle school. So nice, nice. Yeah, that nice. was fun. Um, but uh, but when I did go back and watch, man, I'm like, it's it's hard not to be excited about a lot of these guys. And it's so. Here's the thing: we fell in love. I fell in love with Malik Willis during his pro day, right? Because he was able to throw this deep ball that was beautiful, and all the and and these guys were able to do all of that. I'm not going to be sold on these guys just based off of this. And so, but I will say this much. It's hard not to look at those and be like, man, what, what, what an Anthony Richardson could do in the NFL is gotta be enough to make you feel excited. Like it may not be 
um, immediately impactful. My gosh, man, it feels like something that could be special. Um, yeah. And that's what I, I think a lot of people are hoping for. And, just, you know, I, I've got C.J. Stroud up on the screen, uh, his throwing performance at the Combine. And it, it's like you see him throwing with anticipation, even throwing against air one-on-one. Like, he throws the ball to where the receiver isn't going to be. That receiver never has to make any adjustment to the football. I'm really starting to fall more and more in love with the C.J. Stroud-Joe Burrow comparison because they are very comparable. They're a little bit faster than you think they are on the feet. And as a thrower of the football, the amount of touch is absolutely incredible. These guys can put the ball right where it needs to be. And that's also a leadership quality. If you're not throwing your receivers into reckless tackles, you're not getting them hurt. I mean, you you need quarterbacks that know when to throw a football and when not to. And C.J. Stroud... He just seems like he has that type of natural skill in abundance. And I put this on Twitter and, you know, people wanted to clown me a little bit because I've been kind of anti quarterback. It's not even that I've been anti. It's just, I've known how hard it's going to be for the Panthers to actually be able to trade up to get their preferred quarterback. But with all of the rumors that the Panthers are indeed planning on being very aggressive in the quarterback market, then in my mind, you might as well go up and get CJ Stroud. I'm sorry, but I just, I like the total package of CJ better. I think he's taller, has a bigger frame. um, And to me, his touch is absolutely incredible. And I think that would be worth it. And my final thing here, If you look at the type of offensive line the Carolina Panthers were able to put together last year, if we're able to be even, you know, three quarters of that, that is more than enough protection for CJ to get the ball out of his hands and get it to DJ Moore and Terrace Marshall and whatever receivers we're going to have next year. So as of this moment, if the Panthers indeed are going to trade up and be that aggressive, to finally get that quarterback, yeah, my endorsement is C.J. Stroud. I feel like it's time. I don't think it's – yeah. I mean, actually, I agree. Like, is if you may ask me to bet on who I think is going to have the best NFL career out of the top four quarterbacks, is I think C.J. Stroud is the safest bet. I think that style of play can last in the NFL and win in the NFL. And then, I mean – Bryce Young, everybody says it's because he has this crazy it, so it factor. Like he's just maybe he's more Patrick Mahomes while and what I mean by that is like it's the intangible kind of component that's so right. um defining to how good they are, why they're so good. And that Joe cold ass Joe Burrow style is the Strouds. So I would be the most happy with Stroud personally. I, if you ask, uh, would I be surprised if Bryce Young had a better career than Stroud? I won't think I would be surprised, but I don't think. Um, I would probably say the riskiest of them is Levis and Richardson. Yeah, I mean, because they're going to need some time to develop. I mean, especially yeah. as, you know, especially Anthony Richardson. I, like everybody else, was blown away by the combine performance, but he's only had 13 starts. He only has a 53.8% completion percentage. That's not to say that he can't be a very good NFL quarterback, because I do agree that he probably has the highest upside of any quarterback to come through the draft, uh, maybe since Cam Newton. You know, everybody throws around that comparison. You know, he, he's very, very high ceiling type of a guy. But if you're the Panthers, I just don't know if you're going to trade all the way up until the top five or whatever right. to draft a guy that's not going to be able to start next year. It just, it doesn't really. Or just has some questions if they're really, you know I mean? It's like kind of the Le- Trey Lance, Lamar Jackson upside, you would think. Right. Um, right. And, you know, is that you're betting a lot and you can't uh, quit on that. 